It is sometimes said that a sudden death can create a ghost. And in this story, as you will see, this may just be the case. In 1830, Jane Collier was accidentally shot dead at a farm in Pelsall. 130 years later, in 1960, the farm was demolished and new houses were built in its place. However, based on numerous paranormal experiences and photographs taken by residents of the property in question, it appears that for some reason the spirit of Jane Collier stayed behind. Since writing about the following paranormal experiences at a property in Pelsall, further details have surfaced to suggest why some paranormal activity has been so prevalent. To begin with, I will relate the experiences which were shared with me for my book Ghosts Around Pelsall back in 2011. The family concerned asked to remain anonymous. When they first moved into their property in 2005, the family had no idea that their home would be haunted. Built in 1960, the house was large and bright and exactly what the family were looking for. In the winter of 2005, Mrs K took a photograph of the garden and nothing prepared her for what was in the picture. An apparitional figure of a girl in a hat could clearly be seen standing next to a tree in the garden. The photograph was largely dismissed by her family at the time. The family were at peace in their home for quite some time before they experienced any paranormal activity. The first incident took place at night when the voice of a woman could clearly be heard humming a tune. It was like she was humming while she was in the middle of pegging out some washing, Mrs K told me. The couple were stunned into silence by the sound. The next experience was had by Mr K, whilst at the bottom of the garden tending the chickens. When he looked up towards the house, he could see the figure of a man wearing a top hat, opening and shutting the invisible cupboard doors in the kitchen. He walked away from the chicken coop and towards the house, to make sure that he wasn't seeing things. I couldn't believe my eyes, he told me. The same figure appeared to Mr K later that year as he was checking his car over before going on holiday. The caravan door was open and as I looked up I saw a figure of a man walking to it. I stopped what I was doing and gave chase. But when I got there, there was nothing there, Mr K told me. The most unnerving experience had by Mr K was when he was in the house alone one morning. He had been on a late shift the night before and so had slept in. Suddenly he was woken by heavy footsteps walking up the stairs. He knew that his wife was at work and his children were at school. He was suddenly mortified at the thought that his house had been broken into. Then he heard the tap turn on in the bathroom and the sound of a man sighing loudly. After he had gathered himself, he quietly stepped out of the bedroom and headed towards the bathroom to tackle the intruder. But there was no one there. The couple told me that talking is often heard in the house late at night. It is not unusual to hear talking and think that the television has been left on in the downstairs living room. Whenever checked, the television is always off. Although talking usually occurs late at night, Mrs K related to me that on one occasion when she was working from home, she was suddenly disturbed by what sounded like children running through the house laughing and playing a rowdy game. Will you be quiet? I'm trying to concentrate, she shouted at them, then suddenly realised that her children were at school. On another occasion, whilst running the bath, Mrs K was suddenly aware of someone leaning over her. 
She assumed that it was her husband, but when she turned around, she saw a black figure standing there, wearing a top hat and a tailcoat with his hands behind his back. As she stood, stunned with fear, the black figure simply vanished. In addition to their parents, both children have also seen apparitions in the house. On a number of occasions, their son has seen what can only be described as a World War II airman, based on what he is wearing. He is always seen downstairs going into or coming out of the kitchen. Mrs K told me that their daughter once had quite an upsetting experience when she was younger. When walking past her mum's bedroom, she saw the apparitional head and feet of a girl sitting at the computer chair. She was so upset by the experience that she would not go upstairs on her own for weeks. Mrs K told me that she was furious about this and since they could obviously see and hear the family, she went in the bedroom later and said, How dare you frighten my daughter like that? Don't you ever do that again. Mrs K told me that from the time they arrived at the property, their dog, a German Shepherd, took an instant dislike to the kitchen and always refused to stay in there at night, preferring to stay in the garage. He would howl and scratch the door to get out, she told me. A black mist has often been seen bolting out of the kitchen once the door is opened. This has been seen by both family members and guests to the house who have been surprised by the occurrence. The black mist has sometimes been seen in the hallway and is said to look like a cat which is curled up sleeping. Based on these sightings, the family believe that this is why the dog will not sleep in the kitchen as he is plagued by an apparitional cat. At one point, the family were unable to settle the dog in the garage. He seemed to be barking at nothing. Mr K decided to attempt to record what was upsetting the dog on a dictaphone whilst the family were out at work. To his amazement, when he listened to the tape, he could hear a series of ping-pong noises, which sounded as if someone was bouncing a small ball about in the garage where the dog was. It seemed as if... As soon as the dog stopped barking after the noise, there was a slight pause. Then it would happen again, as if someone was deliberately teasing him. They later recorded the sound again, whilst they were in the house, to make sure that the noise wasn't coming from outside. Mr K told me that the sounds on the tape were not audible to them, as they recorded the dog while they were standing there. When he listened to the tape, Mr K was shocked to hear low-level growling which sounded as if it was coming from next to the dog. This mystery has yet to be explained. Since the property was built as recently as 1960, Mrs K thinks that the haunting has something to do with what was there before. I was later told that their son had also seen two ghostly girls at the property. One who wore a cream dress and had unusual clips in her hair and the other who wore a blue dress and had black holes for eyes. Their son also described seeing a wrinkly old man looking out of his bedroom window when he was a child. He was just getting into the car with the family when he noticed the skinny old burned man with strands of hair on his head looking out of his bedroom window. As he continued to look up at his bedroom window the wrinkly old man turned, then crawled up his bedroom wall and disappeared. As she got older, it was not unusual for their daughter to see the man in the top hat, just for seconds, as he entered the main bedroom. Such occurrences happened so often that the family accepted them and carried on about their business. Despite the paranormal experiences all of them had had, they were in no doubt that there was nothing ominous, threatening, or menacing in their home. The family contacted me again recently, following a new revelation that they had stumbled on. An incident which threw some light on some of the things that had been seen and heard. Whilst in the garage one day, their son noticed that the mirror in the water closet was steamed up, and within the steam was a strange patination. There was no reason for the steam or condensation on this mirror. As his mum wasn't at home, the son took a photograph of the mirror and kept it to show her later. Time elapsed and the image was forgotten about until their son was about to change his phone 
and he was sorting through his photos to keep. It was at that point that he started to examine the photograph he had taken. To his shock, not only had he captured a strange patination, but the very faint image of a ghostly face. Although there, the image was difficult to see, so he enhanced the photograph with basic technology from his phone. The image revealed what looked like a woman's face, together with a number of other anomalies. Following this find, the family dug deeper to find out why there should be ghosts in their garage. Then you could say it all became clearer when one of the family members stumbled upon a newspaper article relating to a sad and fatal event that occurred at Shellfield Lodge in 1830. The following article was published in the Wolverhampton Chronicle on the 2nd of June 1830. A sad and fatal event, and one which adds another to the instances of the loss of human life by the incautious use of firearms, which are unhappily so frequent, has occurred at Shellfield Lodge near Walsall, the residence of Mrs. Harrison. A young female named Jane Collier was killed on Tuesday last by a gunshot wound under the following circumstances, which we derive from evidence taken from an inquest held at the Four Crosses Shellfield upon view of the body before Henry Smith Esquire, coroner and a respectable jury. It appears from the statement of Amelia Mason that Mrs. Harrison had been for several days on a visit to her daughter in the neighbourhood of Stourbridge. Her brother, Mr. Grove, Jane Collier, a dressmaker, who had been at work for her for about a week, George Lott, a servant boy, about 16 years of age, the witness, and another female servant, being left at home. Between two and three o'clock on Tuesday afternoon, the three females were at dinner in the kitchen when Lott came in and asked for some milk for the dog, which he fetched from the dairy and shortly afterwards returned swearing. He said the dog had knocked it out of the milk pan. He then reached down a gun and said he would shoot the dog, asking Jane Collier to go with him to open the door to the outbuilding in which the dog was, but she refused. In three or four minutes after, the witness went out of the kitchen into the yard carrying some dishes, which she intended to take to the brew house. She saw Lot in the fold yard, standing opposite to her with the gun in his hand. He said laughing, Anne, I'll shoot you. Witness told him she would throw the dishes down if he did not put the gun away. On this, she turned her head round and observed Jane Collier standing near to the pump with a cloth and some soap in her hand for the purpose of washing herself. Witness then went into the brew house. While there... Lot, having come back into the yard, she heard him say, apparently in joke, Miss Collier, I'll shoot you. To which she replied, George, I'll stand to be shot then. And something else was said by each, but she did not hear distinctly what, and instantly the gun was discharged. Lot, at the same time, exclaiming, Oh Lord. Witness immediately came to the brew house door and saw the unfortunate girl lying dead upon the pavement. She never spoke, groaned or stirred, but was killed instantly. Lot ran up the fold yard towards the lane, and the gun was left reared against the dairy wall. On an alarm being given, several women came, and ultimately Mr Grove with Lot arrived. On witness telling the women how the affair happened, as already stated, Lot declared that she was not telling the truth, and also denied the conversation she had related to have passed between him and the deceased. He said he was going in at the kitchen door with a gun in his hand when it went off and shot Miss Collier, who was walking behind him. Mr Henry Eastgrove, in his examination, stated that on Tuesday between one and two o'clock he left home, taking Lot with him, for the purpose of cutting a little turf at about half a mile distant. When they got about a hundred yards down the lane, they met a cow belonging to Mrs. Harrison, which he sent Lot back with to tie up in the cow house, and desired him 
to return as quickly as he could. In about twenty minutes afterwards, he came back and said, Mr Grove, I have hurt or shot my hand with a gun, at the same time holding it out. It bled considerably. He then said that Miss Collier was shot, hesitated at the questions that were put to him respecting the accident, and did not give any satisfactory answer, but seemed frightened and hurt. Witness hastened home, taking Lot with him, and on their way they met a girl, who, on being asked if she had heard of Miss Collier being shot, she replied, She is shot dead! Lot fell down and exclaimed, Oh, pick me up! He was, however, left, and in the afternoon was taken into custody. The gun, which witnesses saw in the fold yard when he got home, was afterwards removed, and could not be found until Friday morning. The day to which an adjournment of the inquest took place, it was delivered to Mr Grove by an old female servant of Mrs Harrison's, and it appears that the mother of the deceased had concealed it under a bed. Mr Thomas Pitt, surgeon of Walsall, who examined the corpse, described the wound, from the effects of which the death of the girl must have been instantaneous. The contents of the gun having passed through the left eye, which was completely blown out into the brain. Having made himself acquainted with the manner in which the accident occurred, witness asked Lot, whose hand was injured, how he held the gun when it went off. He replied, it was resting upon his left arm, his right hand being placed upon the lock, and in that position it exploded. He stood facing the kitchen door, the deceased being at or near the pump. If, the witness said, the prisoner was holding the gun in the position described by him, and it then exploded, the contents would strike the deceased, if standing at the time in the situation mentioned. The barrel of the gun being a long one, the muzzle would nearly touch the face of the deceased, who was of short stature. Two of the women who went to Mrs Harrison's on hearing of the accident were next examined. To one of them, Lot, after denying the expressions which Amelia Mason persisted in, were used by himself and Mrs Collier immediately before the accident, said the words he used were these. Miss Collier, if the gun had been charged, I might have shot you. To which she replied, she was not afraid, and that he was scraping his shoes to go back into the kitchen, having the gun over his left arm, with his right hand over the lock. When he went off by accident, that he did not know it was charged, that he reached the gun down for that purpose, as he pretended of shooting the dog, but that his real motive was to frighten the girls. After a recapitulation of the evidence by the coroner, the jury returned a verdict to the effect that the gun, which in the hands of George Lott, was by some means, at present unknown, discharged, whereby Jane Collier was accidentally killed, and a deodand of thirty shillings was fixed upon the gun. Based on the newspaper article, the family feel that they are able to establish the identity of the two ghosts in the garage. They presume that the image, caught in the water closet, may be that of Jane Collier, assuming that before the houses were built, this was the area where Jane Collier was accidentally killed. It is sometimes said that a sudden death can trap a spirit, which may be the case here. As for the teasing their dog experienced, they squarely put the blame on the spirit of the servant boy George Lott, who, according to the article, appeared to have no patience for dogs. The family do still live at the address and have no plans to move, and conclude that there are numerous spirits at the property, and they accept what they see and hear. In sharing their paranormal experiences and the history of the shooting of Jane Collier, the family hope that in some way her soul may now rest in peace.